And now it's time to move to our presentations. Before I will introduce our first uh, keynote speaker, just a few technical notes. Next five presenters have in everybody 15 minutes for a presentation and five minutes for questions. Questions should be presented in a written form and I will choose two, three for answering as we have here rather strict time limits. You can see on your screen a right-hand side online platform and time schedule and there are also uh, you can find the question and answering buttons. Please use them. Our first keynote speaker is Professor Jussi Jauhiainen. Jussi Jauhiainen is a professor of geography at the University of Turku. He is an expert on urban and regional development and visiting professor at the University of Tartu, in which he has worked for more than a quarter of a century. His topic today is a cross-border mobilities between Estonia and Finland. Please, Jussi. Okay, uh, good morning everyone, uh, thank you for your introduction, uh, Raul. Uh, it is uh, my fourth time in uh, six months in my office, so the COVID pandemic has created also uh, challenges for us. Um, my topic today is about cross-border mo cross mobilities. And uh, these are issues that I have experienced myself, as Raul already mentioned. So for the past three decades, I have been going back and forth over the borders, and um, that has been my life. And it's a pity that we cannot meet physically uh, today in uh, Tallinn. And my special greetings to Zaika and Donatas and Teeth, and maybe one day we can still meet each other physically, hopefully soon. So let's go uh, to the main topic, cross-border mobilities with the specific case of uh, Estonia and uh, Finland. So my presentation will be about, uh, like in academic presentations, usually a few words about theory concepts, then about the empirical case, which is Finland and Estonia, and then some reflections. And actually, I will leave quite many questions in the end, because we are living in, in rather exceptional times. So how then cross-border mobilities emerge and how they develop? So first of all, the basic point in the really background of cross-border mobilities is the emergence of territorial borders. So there has to be a border to be crossed. And that's already for a few hundred years. So the world Earth has been divided into uh, political units that we call states. And that has you know, resulted in mobility of people, goods, ideas from one state to another, so crossing the border. And while uh, this is happening, what, what will take place is, is often connections and separations. So borders both connect and separate. So what is this connection meaning? Connection means that usually between neighboring countries then develop exchange of uh, material goods, um, movement of people, migration of people, and separations because these uh, Sovereign territorial units are those who then develop different practices among population and identities. And some people still, you know, continue go and connect back and forth and they become transnational. And why this is today very important is that actually, while being separated and connected, there is a huge potential for innovations because these slight differences, slight uh, similarities, they develop cognitive proximity. So people will understand each other, but they don't have exactly the same perspectives. And that is the really uh, trigger for innovations, being able to understand each other enough, but not being always with the same uh, 
um, opinion. So about the borders, a few points. There are borders that are easy to cross and then are borders that are not so easy to cross. So facilitating very easy uh, passage through these borders that creates then, you know, uh, no obstacles for these uh, connections. Then there are borders that are, you know, constrained by uh, physical, geographical uh, factors like waters, mountains, bureaucracy, and so on, creating additional restrictions for cross-border mobility and for people to be able to become transnationals. So what could be then the ways to overcome these constraints, especially between Finland and, and um, Estonia. So I will run very quickly through the long history of cross-border mobilities between Finland and Estonia. So it's good for us and it's important for us to remember the long time mobilities. What I mean here is that some thousands of years ago, really, really few thousands of years ago, we were the same people. Pre, I call them pre-transnational people. And then a group of people left to north, from Estonia to north, and then it's an issue of, you know, anecdotes that whether these people who left to north were more clever or more stupid. But, you know, this is a story that we can continue sometime in the evening. So. But nevertheless, people uh, left. Then during the 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, uh, these cross-border mobilities actually facilitated the development of national consciousness, both in Estonia and in Finland. So some people moved to, from, uh, or mo you know, uh, traveled, moved back and forth between Finland and Estonia and utilized their observations to develop national consciousness. You know, Lydia Koidula, Kreuzwald, Lönnroth, Grane, Bats. These people who had certain cross-border uh, communication between Finland and Estonia. So these are important routes for these cross-border uh, mobilities. Then during the past 60 years, there has been much more focus on economic cross-border mobilities. They were, of course, constrained by some political issues, but in the end, economy became important. I call them cross-border shopping. So utilizing the differences between these two, two countries in terms of price quality differences in material goods, uh, having uh, business opportunities or different uh, business skills. So that was a motive for these cross-border mobilities. You know, in the Soviet times, in the early uh, restored uh, independence time and still today. And that required actually logistics. So how people can connect physically and nowadays also digitally. And that actually facilitated a lot the emergence of transnational people, a being able to you know, connect back and forth. And then uh, this is a recent study. You can Google it by uh, Siri Silm, uh, Jauhjainen, uh, Janik Raun, and, uh, and Markus Tiru about recent cross-border mobilities between Finland and Estonia. So we studied all people, every single people who moved uh, or uh, had, you know, migrated or just moved temporarily between these two countries, even having a daily visits. So that was uh, the scope of the research. And in the end, what we uh, realized is that there is certain, a big amount of people are just, you know, daily tourists and so on. But some people travel much, uh, much more. They remain there for longer time or they, they connect back and forth. So these are transnationals. And roughly what I could say is that there are about 2 million people that travel back and forth between Finland and Estonia every week, every year, about 2 million people. And of these 2 million people, 1% are transnationals. So roughly 20,000 people. Uh, Estonians tend to have more visits to Finland, shorter visits, Finnish people have uh, fewer visits to Estonia. So this is the situation now. And as it was mentioned in the uh, introduction of the, the lecture or this seminar, 
is that, you know, what happened particular today uh, in this year? So there were uh, installed lockdowns, lockdowns to prevent the spread of this uh, horrible disease, this COVID-19, and that influenced a lot the mobilities of people, mobilities of pe people globally, but especially between Finland and Estonia. So it was very abrupt uh, lockdown and substantial uh, outcomes. So we have to remember that while we have used to have, and as the minister said, Schengen is a good thing, the cross-border mob cross mobilities between Finland and Estonia are important, but they cannot be taken for granted. We have also bad a political experience in the past. In 1940, the border was suddenly closed. So then the issue becomes, though, what will be the short and long-term impacts from this lockdown? What will happen to the cross-border mobilities between uh, Finland and Estonia? When we are moving to the situation 3.0, so the 0, 0.0 was the early routes, you know, 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago. Then we moved to the 1.0, that was the last century and the end of 19th century. And then this 2.0, when there was this economic uh, prevalence of the, the connection. So what will then happen in the situation when we are moving towards the situation 3? Point zero in these cross-border mobilities. And especially the impact of COVID. COVID, short-term impacts and long-term impacts. Not the COVID as a disease, but the lockdown and the experience of lockdown. Sudden, you know, closing of the border. So will there, will there be more people who return, or at least wish to return, from Finland to Estonia or from Estonia to Finland? Or do they just use these digital transnational practices like we do? We, ha we have these connections. So we will that be a physical movement or is it just uh, digital? Is that enough? Then in terms of future, uh, we talk about this bubble. It's possible to move between two countries that, for example, that have the same, uh, same values, same, uh, you know, disease situation at the moment same economic interests. So is there a chance to develop this type of mobility bubble between Finland and Estonia and develop it more strategically to enhance the crisis preparedness for both countries and the security of supply? So some crisis might come. So is this mobility and this bubble between these two countries, is that something or between Finland and uh, other Baltic countries, is that something to be developed further? Then, is this enough what we have now? We have the boats going, we have some kind of digital connections. So what about enhancing these connections? We, there's a talk about, you know, physical connection uh, by tunnel, by the way, in 1940s, people were able to ski over the the, the Gulf of Finland, so ski from Estonia to Finland or back. These times in climate change, they will not come back. So what about enhancing these connections? And what about the enhancing the digital connections? 6G networks are to become soon. In less than 10 years, 6G is here. So what type of, you know, presence, cross-border mobility, these facilitate. And then the, the kind of final question here is that how to maintain the proper co cognitive proximity. So we are enough similar, but not too similar, including the transnationals that take some pieces of Estonia, some pieces of Finland in their mindsets and can be, you know, important moderators. So how to maintain this proper cognitive proximity to foster innovation potential uh, and processes between Finland and Estonia. And my final reflections uh, is that, uh, that my, my short introduction here to this theme of cross-border mobilities is to show that there have been, you know, mobilities, cross-border mobilities for ages. So it's nothing new. It's not the Schengen issue. It's not nothing this today's issue. 
So they have been for centuries, for millennia, and that I argue that it has been advantage for both countries, the mobility. It has been maybe an advantage that we became a little bit different, but it's an advantage to continue these uh, connections. Uh, transnationals, the people who have both connections to Finland and Estonia, they can become very crucial mediators because they understand the, the you know, fine-tuned issues in both countries and they can support the development of innovations, the cognitive proximity and so on. So let's hope that their life will be easy. They, they can, you know, become maybe politically active in both countries their mobilities back and forth will be facilitate, facilitated. And then the final point is a little bit like a humorous point as well, that we need some kind of glue, not only, you know, thinking about business, not thinking about, uh, you know, cultural values. So some kind of glue to motivate, you know, the maintenance of Finnish-Estonian connections. And as actually the history shows, some part of the glue is, uh, you know, in a liquid form. That has been the story of the connection. So not always, you know, innovation motivations. So that was more or less what I was intending to uh, say to you. And I see that I have like one minute time more. So I just uh, uh, say in the end that this was a case about Finland and Estonia, but of course you can reflect the same theory, the same principles with your neighboring countries, between Latvia and Lithuania, maybe uh, Lithuania, Poland, Sweden, Norway, and so on. So what are the cognitive proximity issues and can, can these, you know, foster uh, innovation? So I can hand, it, hand this over to uh, Raul and, and to the seminar organizers. Thank you, thank you, Yussi, and um, thank you for interesting um, uh, presentation. As as we both know, Estonians and probably Finns are very um, takes time to warm up. So we have no uh, questions so far from audience. But uh, as a well prepared moderator, I have a question to you. Actually, even two questions. So there has been a lot of discussion in Estonia about this tunnel issue, and you mentioned it as well as a physical link between Helsinki and Tallinn. Uh, and if I look at this discussion, it seems to me that uh, at the moment we are moving a bit down in a, in a, in a, in a scale of hopes that uh, from Estonian side we are not so optimistic about the potential uh, tunnel between Tallinn and, and Helsinki. What are perspectives from uh, Finnish side, as you know, I guess, uh, both views? Uh, yeah, the, the question is relevant. Uh, I think uh, this is a broader question. So how Finland and Estonia are going to be, you know, connected. So if they want to be connected only through ship contact, uh, connections or through the air that's one thing if they want to be physically connected in terms of climate change the tunnel is the only only hope for that um, the tunnel as such is an investment it requires money I think the, the more important is that whether it will facilitate something whether it's an issue also of security of supply crisis preparedness Maybe, you know, something happens, the boat uh, traffic cannot be, you know, hold. Uh, an un unfortunate thing is probably that we look too much into the near future. We look into 2020s, maybe 2030s, in 10 years perspective, what is, what is it worth? Then there are also an issue that two, two, you know, initiatives, one more private one, one more public one. One is saying we do it now, the other one saying maybe after 20 years. So I think there should be much more strategic focus. What is this tunnel meant for? What are the big advantages? What are the challenges? And I think money is not here the, the main issue in the beginning. Then, you know, there are investors who would like to put their money there and maybe gain the money back. So I think we should think it more strategically. What kind of benefits that would create? So that, that's my point. Okay, thank you. Uh Perhaps I can may ask one short question. Uh, uh, I hope short answer uh, uh, to this question as well. That um, 
from your point of view, as you see our life from both sides, from Estonian side and from the Finnish side, how much Estonians in Finland are treated as aliens or strangers and how much they are like distant relatives or even a small brothers? What is your personal feelings? Um, I think in the, you know, you know, deep inside of us, we are like, you know, cousins or brothers, maybe not brothers, but at least cousins. So we are, we know that we are, you know, family or we are, like I said, this is the old brother or big brother or small brother who left some time ago. I still remember him. And uh, yeah, I think we are quite connected. Uh, then, you know, this is indeed in, inside of us. Then another issue that actually we are very professional. So we don't care. Okay, is it Estonian? Is it Latvian? And so on. The, the cognitive proximity, we have lived in the northern part of Europe. So we have some kind of, you know, common understandings of the customs, you know, sauna, skiing, and this kind of thing. So that helps the development of, you know, this kind of uh, cognitive proximity. So it's not so distant. But I think we are like, you know, family that were a little bit separated, but we still, uh, you know, remember each other and we tr trust each other. And that is fundamental for innovation processes. Thank you. Thank you, Yussi.